Hey everyone, Tony D and little Joan here. Joan of Arc! Uh, with another hot take. This one on the people of Iran. So what has happened, you might ask, because your news won't tell you. Um, the people of Iran are protesting. Now, the mainstream media, the legacy media, whatever you want to call them, the TV people, they're reporting that they are protesting mainly because of the downed airline. And that is certainly a factor. They are not happy about that. However, interesting wrinkle that's not being reported. And you could see these videos. And the only place I could find them was the Gateway Pundit, which is a very partisan site. Uh, however, the videos don't lie, I don't think. Um, and what you can see is the protesters, first off, they're tearing down, there's one of a group of Iranian protesters tearing down a picture of Soleimani and the Ayatollah. Then the most striking thing, because this happens in the daytime in front of lots of people, the protesters are walking along and in Iran, they have this square where there's an American flag and an Israeli flag and people typically stomp on it or walk over it to show disrespect. The protesters are walking around both of them. Isn't that interesting? And the few handful of people who do walk across those flags are booed by the rest of the crowd. Yeah. So what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that just like in every other country, Iran is ruled by a bunch of rich a-holes that nobody likes. Um, every country is ruled by rich a-holes that nobody likes because in the fence of the rich a-holes, nobody likes the people in charge, right? Like no matter where you work, if you're a worker, you sit around with the other workers and you talk about the boss and how lame they are and all the things they could do for you, but they don't. Um, it's the same way with a country, right? Everybody complains about whoever's in charge. Even if you're a Trump supporter, you probably have some complaints about Trump. Oh, I wish he, I wish he didn't do this or that, or I wish he'd do this. You know, that's just a natural, natural uh, 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 result of some human being being in charge of other human beings. But the difference, of course, in the United States is we have lots of rich a-holes. So you never know which rich a-hole is going to be in charge. And because it's sort of spread out and decentralized, uh, that's good. Because sometimes we get a good rich a-hole, sometimes we get a bad rich a-hole. In Iran, the rich a-hole pretty much stays the same. And in a lot of countries like that. And that's the problem. Uh, centralization is always the problem. I've said this in previous videos. When you just have one rich a-hole running a country, eventually there's so much resentment Regardless of how the guy acts, um, you know, they people just hate him more and more and more. He's probably also the main employer. And uh, not sure totally how the system works in Iran, but I know there's a lot of corruption in these um, Middle Eastern countries. And uh, part of the Arab Spring was, you know, you had a... It started when a guy who couldn't feed his family... Uh, who was a college graduate, went to get a permit to sell, I want to say like pistachios or dates or something. He was denied it because he didn't know the right people. And, uh, you know, and this was a job he was struggling with already. And uh, he couldn't feed his family. and just couldn't take it. He snapped. He lit himself on fire. And that, that started the uh, Arab Spring. So this is what happens in other countries. So for those of you in, on the left side of politics who keep complaining about America and capitalism, um, without capitalism, this is what you get. You get, a, you get all the money centralized in a bunch of rich a-holes who then run the country and then tell you what to do. And as their power um, is threatened, they get more and more violent because that's how they maintain power. And they're forced to, because people resent them more and more. So the violence ticks up and up, and it's just a vicious cycle until finally the violence ticks up to the point where people overthrow them or 
they get the message and want to live <laughs> and they say, okay, uh, I'm going to pass the torch to this guy or we're going to have elections or whatever. Now, I don't think, I mean, Iran's pretty modern and um, because of their infrastructure and because of the way things have been built up, um, you know, they, they could transition to something. I, I don't know what it would be. Um, certainly the mullahs don't want to give up the power and the president there doesn't really have power, but now they're in this um, interesting position where with Soleimani gone, he kind of the power behind the throne, I'm sensing. I don't know that for sure. You know, the guys who replaced him probably aren't that powerful. Or at the very least, they're keeping a low profile because they don't want the United States to go, boom. Um, which, by the way, again, I don't support that, uh, that sort of drone striking nonsense. I think Trump and all presidents should be held accountable for what they do. And, uh, you know, unfortunately... It's very complicated. Technically, what he did was legal, but he, you know, we never should have had this situation in the, to begin with. We wouldn't if we pulled out of the Middle East and minded our own business, but I digress. So it looks like the Iranian people don't really have a problem with the United States or Israel, and they would just like to live their lives and not be under an oppressive regime. So maybe the regime will finally get the message and say, well, we're going to open things up a little more. We're not going to be a-holes. And, um, you know, we're going to allow things to uh, to sort of melt, uh, kind of like the Soviets did. And they could transition to something. I don't, I don't know what that would be. It would probably still be relatively religious. I don't think the mullahs are going to going to pull out any sign anytime soon. Um, but they might just back off and, uh, maybe give more power to the presidency and, uh, give, give the people more power, maybe get some sort of parliamentary thing going with the president. And then, uh, uh, that might be their three branches of government. It might be the president, the parliament and the mullahs. And, and they would be kind of like the Supreme Supreme Court, only probably the most powerful of the three, you know. And then the fourth uh, branch for them would definitely be the military. The military probably has a lot of unspoken power in Iran. Um, people don't realize that in a lot of other countries, you know, the United States, we have police and we have the military, and they're two separate things. In a lot of other countries, it's just the military. Um, you know, because it's a lot less, I mean, there's, it's simpler to do it that way. And for the people in power, they can directly, you know, work the military. If you have the police, then it's kind of, uh, you know, kind of, uh, what's the word? It, 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 you're, you're, you're distancing yourself from the power a little bit. You're delegating it a little more. Um, or they have police, but they're very militaristic and they, and they work very much with the military. In the United States, um, the military, you know, doesn't really operate here, you know, from a, a, you know, unless like there's an emergency, right? And they call out the National Guard. You know, other than that, that's, that's only when we're in real trouble, right? Other than that, we rely on the police, EMTs, and first responders and firemen uh, to handle this this kind of stuff. But in other countries, you know, they don't really have that uh, precise division uh, because it's always been sort of the military that protects everybody. Or they have, like I said, they have a division, but it's really more a name than anything else. So, uh, but this is good news. This is very good news. Now, hopefully, the mullahs get the message and they say, oh, we got to reorganize things here. And, uh, you know, maybe if we work with people, we can uh, uh, get our country back under control and we can actually have trade again. Because once we have trade with Iran, they will have a vested interest in not bombing people or, or starting problems or blowing people up. So maybe it's time 
for the Iranians to abandon their whole death to America shtick and, uh, and, and death to Israel shtick and, and become, you know, just a normal country that does normal things. They certainly have a lot of resources. They certainly could do well uh, by being peaceful. Um, the question is whether or not the United States is going to uh, do that. Now, I think President Trump is very open to that. Um, unfortunately, I think he's also a businessman and he's probably going to try to screw the, <laughs> screw the Iranians a little bit. Um, but maybe not. I don't know. It would be, I think it'd be worth it to him to get the peace deal, you know, that's a real peace deal and not have like, I don't know, a 10% surcharge on, on Iranian oil or something. I think if he could get the deal that the Iranians would take uh, U.S. dollars for their oil, I mean, that's all, he, that's all he'd really want, plus, you know, a peace deal and recognizing Israel and all that. Um, which I think now, seeing that footage, I think that could happen. You know, I think really now it's, it's, it's the people in charge are the only, the only stopping block in, uh, in the Iranian uh, country from, you know, if the, if the general populace is okay with Israel and the United States, you know, if they're happy that Soleimani's gone and uh, generally want peace, then really it's just these rich a-holes that are holding up the process. And isn't that always the way?